I am Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, and this is Sister Power on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm also president of Sisters Empowering Hawaii, Hawaii's foremost women's empowerment organization. This show is dedicated to the motivation, advancement, education, and empowerment of all women. October is Breast Cancer Month. My special guest is Rolanda Morgan, serves as Susan G. Coleman, Executive Director, Hawaii. Rolanda, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you so much. Thank you for having uh, me on your show today to share what uh, Susan G. Coleman is doing in the breast cancer community here in Hawaii and uh, around the country. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I love about well, October is definitely a special month, but everyone wears pink. That's the color, uh -huh. the color pink. That is true. That is true. Um, and last year, or maybe it's two years um, now at this point, uh, we at Coleman decided to emphasize a bit more that it was about more than pink. Um, we certainly are associated with pink and love to take responsibility for having that being the color associated with breast cancer during the month of October. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure that people understood what the mission was. And that was to support the breast cancer community, those who have to face the diagnosis of breast cancer, those who are living with breast cancer, um, and those who support them. Well, let's just jump right into it then. What is Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Let's talk about that. So it is it is a recognition and um, a, and a celebration a celebration for those people who um, may want to um, call themselves survivors. Um, those are people who have faced a uh, breast cancer di diagnosis, have gone through treatment, and are on the other side. Um, and I find themselves cancer free. Um, also those people who, um, are recognized as thrivers, uh, those are people who, um, are living with breast cancer. There are many women who live with breast cancer for years. Um, that is why we have, uh, as an organization who d devotes um, more money to research to find cures and new treatments, quite all of that research money, a great deal of it, 85% of it, towards looking for treatments for those who live with breast cancer, um, recognized as and understood to be metastatic breast cancer, meaning that the breast cancer, the breast, the cancer started in the breast. However, it has moved to other parts of the body. Uh, women can live um, many years, um, but they are on a roller coaster ride when they have metastatic breast cancer. There are good days. There are days that are not so good. Um, so we refer to them as um, as strivers. So they um, that part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month um, is celebrating the life of those people who are dealing with breast breast cancer. It's also um, making the public aware of the things that can be done um, to bring the numbers down in terms of people who are having to deal with, with breast cancer uh, as a disease. And we've become quite successful actually through early detection um, and making people aware of the need for a mammogram starting at age 40, um, one should have a mammogram annually. Uh, if you have incidents of breast cancer in your family, um, you should speak with your doctor um, to find out when you should start to have a mammogram because it may be earlier than 40. But 40 is baseline for when every everyone should start to have their mammogram. And because we have um, been quite successful, both our organization and in many of those who are involved with um, breast cancer uh, in the women's health community, 
have made great strides in getting people to get their mammograms. So our incidence rates are down. Um, but um, we are still striving to find those treatments so that those with metastatic breast cancer can live better lives. Um, there is no cure, but we want to find the treatments that make their lives less stressful. And while we are still working on the ultimate goal, which is to find a cure for breast cancer. You know, you sent me some interesting information last night, and I want to talk about what is stand for her, a health equity revolution. Goldman took a look at um, barriers that prevented um, the community at large from getting the highest level of treatment and preventative services possible in order to have effect on the numbers of people who are being diagnosed with breast cancer. What we found was that Black women had the highest rate of breast cancer in the country. So we focused on a program that is truly about a health equity revolution in total. So making sure that no matter where you are, no matter what you, where you live, no matter who you are, you have access to the best health care. Um, we focused on uh, African American women because the numbers dictated that we do so. Black women are about 40% more likely to die from breast cancer than white women. And we have put together that program, Stand for Her, her being Health Equity Revolution, so that we could have culturally responsive navigators if one were to call um, Coleman's helpline at 1-877-GO-COLEMAN, a breast care helpline. One can be connected uh, to a patient navigator. These navigators are attuned to the culture of the people that I, they are speaking to. Here in Hawaii, that is particularly um, mm -hmm. of, of acute of, uh, importance as we are a multi multicultural uh, community here. So um, we made sure that there were also navigators at the other end of that phone who could speak um, to our Micronesian community, uh, to you know, Native Hawaiians and Samoans and Tongans. Um, as we found that, and I'm sure you would agree, that people are more responsive when they feel there's someone on the other end of the line who understands them and they can speak freely to. But the African-American community with its greater need, um, because while we aren't um, having more diagnosis than the, than the population at large, it is because we are late in getting that diagnosis. Early stage breast cancer, no one's dying from early stage breast cancer anymore, stage one. But the late diagnosis is, is where we are acutely focused in working with the African-American community. Don't wait. Don't wait. That's, that's why, why the focus on black women? You're explaining that. Can you further ex you know, elaborate on why the focus on black women? Well, it is because, um, and there are, you know, some cultural differences um, in, in, in why black women are higher in numbers. There are some differences in the types of, uh, of tumors. Um, I am not a scientist. I am not a physician, so I cannot speak in scientific or medical terms, but that is certainly one area. Um, as, as I just alluded to, the late stage diagnosis is a major problem. And everyone can understand that. If we are going to, uh, because of all of the many things that we are involved in in, their li in our lives, and for many of us, our focus on taking up care of everyone else except for ourselves, uh, we put off um, when we know that something is not right with our body. And no one knows your body better than you. So we always focus on 
having people understand that they should know they're normal. So you know when something's not normal in your body, when you find something not normal in your breast, then you must go and have it checked. Um, there are barriers to care that are also a are tied to socioeconomic considerations in our communities. Uh, so we are focusing on making sure that within communities, there are um, facilities um, for people in the communities to uh, actually go and get the health care that they need at the level um, that anyone else would be able to uh, get their health care. Uh, and we also face some risk factors um, that are directed from other uh, disease um, such as diabetes, such as being overweight, um, those things um, also lead to uh, behaviors that um, can be detrimental um, and um, point to uh, a need to concentrate more on our total health, which will ultimately um, help us in avoiding a disease either like breast cancer. So what are some of the racial and ethnic difference in breast cancer in the U.S.? <laughs> well, again, we are 40% uh, uh, more likely to die from breast cancer. So our death rate, our mortality rate is our difference here. We were not uh, getting more than um, other populations in um, the communities here in the U.S. We are having a higher mortality rate because we are discovering the disease later. Um, here in Hawaii, for instance, breast cancer is the number one cancer causing death among women, number one, and nothing else comes close. So breast cancer is responsible for 35% of deaths from cancer in Hawaii. Wow. The next largest is lung and rothus cancer at 10%. So that's an enormous, that's an enormous difference. That's an enormous difference. And it all points to um, that late stage diagnosis. Early detection is, is very key to survival rates where breast cancer is concerned now. Wow. Well, what are the unseen financial barriers that undermine care for breast cancer patients, and how is Coleman addressing them? Well, most recently, um, Coleman released a white paper, um, and it was called "Making Ends." It's called "Making Ends Meet," uh, and we took a look at how the financial and economic uh, situations affect um, a breast cancer patients ability to get um, the treatment that they need. And we were able to uncover that breast cancer is the most expensive form of cancer to treat. The most expensive. Up to 73% of adult cancer survivors experience what is known as financial toxicity or um, personal finances that um, prevent them from going to out-of-pocket costs that um, occur when fighting a disease that is as expensive as breast cancer is. Uh, one exhausts all the coverage that they get from their insurance coverage, and um, it is a clearly a problem. Almost 50% of breast cancer pa patients report that even mild financial Toxicity affects their treatment choices. Um, it affects their quality of life. I mean, we're getting down to choosing between, okay, so am I going to get 
all of the groceries that I'm going to, I want to get this week, or am I going to get that treatment I need? So that's where I, it is toxic. Um, Colvin, uh, two years ago, came up with, or just before we went into COVID, we came up with a financial assistance program. And with that program, one can call the Coleman Helpline, 1-800-GO-COLEMAN. And on the other end of it, there will be someone who will take their call. And for people in Hawaii, you want them to know that we've, we've made it so that that line is available 24-7. You won't get an answering machine uh, because of the time difference that can affect our communication um, to um if we're connecting with an, op an organization on the mainland, um, and our, our call center is located on the so someone will be there. But if you call and you are a breast cancer patient or you're living with breast cancer, you can um, apply for our financial assistance program. And you can get from $550 to $750 in three days in your hands. Uh, to help with some of those things that prevent one or to assist um, with some of the things of life that you need in order to um, continue with your treatment, um, to get to your treatment, transportation call, to care for your children if you need to get a babysitter, to um, take care of your kids when you go for your treatment. Um, during COVID, we expanded the categories that we, that uh, one could use those funds for um, to rent and, and food. So it is truly financial assistance for those who find themselves in that um, situation where um, they need financial assistance in order to continue their treatment. We don't want that to be we discovered um, through getting the information and doing research for this paper. That that was indeed an issue with um, people who were facing a breast cancer diagnosis and in treatment to getting the level of treatment that they need. So that's one of the things that Coleman is doing. This is some great information that, you know, I want the Sister Power viewers out there to share this video because this information that you're sharing, especially financially, is pertinent information. So let me backtrack a little. You know, you, you mentioned mammograms. Where can women obtain free mammograms? Is there a place here that we can obtain a free mammogram? Well, almost uh, any, any, anywhere, any of the hospital systems, any of the, um, the um, community clinic who provide that service, who have mammography, um, no one can, is refused a mammogram. So uh, that's a fallacy. Um, one can always get a, one can get their mammogram. So that's, that's no longer something that one fears that they can, they will not be able to walk into um, a hospital or a place where treatment is available and not get their mammogram. So that funding that I, that I just mentioned um, for the financial assistance program um, comes from events like our, our More Than Pink Walk, which we had this, this past weekend. Um, and those happen all over the country. And that's one of the main uh, reasons why that funding, that fundraising raising happens in order that no one uh, be refused both the treatment and the ability to remove the barriers that prevent them from getting that treatment. That's good to know. And I want our sister power viewers to know that we are going to do a part two on um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month with R Rolanda. And I read, Rolanda, that you, um, let's talk a little bit about you. you know, yeah, you started off as a volunteer. Yes, yes. Talk about that. So many, I, I'm not an unusual in that, in the Coleman organization. Many, many people come to Coleman um, as volunteers. Uh, I came as a volunteer uh, for the uh, Race for the Cure and participating in the Race for the Cure. 
and moved here from um, New York. And on the day that I arrived here, uh, I, the walk or the race at the time was happening in Kapiolani Park. I went down and some someone who's in the organization recruited me to come out and become a volunteer. So volunteers are the, the engine that drives um, Palmer. Um, and they participate on many, many different levels. Not only with our walk, we have um, advisory committees on all different levels. Um, those who work uh, with our uh, legislators to make sure that women's health issues are, are, are brought before our legislators and uh, passed in order that we can have laws that protect uh, women's health. We, of course, are specific are particularly interested in those laws that cover breast cancer coverage, but women's health in the main. Um, so we have volunteers that work on that level. Um, so volunteering um, and and Coleman sort of go hand in hand. And yes, that's what what brought me to the organization. And and after a few years have passed, uh, I'm now the executive here in Hawaii. Let's talk to our sister power viewers about ways to give. Let's continue. Let's keep moving it forward. Let's talk about ways to give. Mm -hmm. Ways to give are, are quite easy and available all year. If you go to Coleman.org, and there are many reasons to go to Coleman.org. Coleman um, one is to um, make a donation. Um, and uh, there, it's quite easy. There's a big button on the home page that says donate. So it, it's quite easy to make a donation there. Um, we have uh, many people who uh, leave endowments for us. We have uh, matching funds through um, places of employment. So there are many ways in which one can donate, but $5 to us means as much as $5,000. So there's nothing too small or too large. Um, our support coming from, from the community uh, has grown in such a way that we have been able to um, direct more than a billion dollars to specifically to research. There is no one larger, there's no larger contributor to breast cancer research. Give it, that means giving funds to the researchers who are doing the work to find the cure than Susan G. Coleman, other than the United States. So that's one place where the funding goes. But um, Coleman.org is also loaded with all kinds of education. If one wants to learn uh, breast can about Breast Cancer 101, um, that's available on Susan G. Coleman. All of our programs stand for her, which we have just mentioned. We have a new research project called um, Shares for Cures, where the community can share their information in order that we get that information to the researchers who are doing um, the work. We have um, the Health Equity Revolution blog and Instagram accounts. I would direct all of your uh, Sister Power uh, listeners and viewers to go there and take a look at that. They're great stories. We have uh, doctors, um, survivors, uh, of which I am one, um, who share their stories. Um, and um, keep us updated on um, the news where breast cancer uh, treatments are concerned. So there's a plethora of information there. It tells you how people can get involved and how they can keep up with um, this disease that is still touching far too many. And that as long as it is touching people, common will be there. Uh, we will be there. Um, on all of the levels to care, um, helping those who are in the community, helping others um, through the community, through our events that we have, like our walk, uh, like the gala that we have here in Hawaii, um, so that we can uh, ultimately find a cure. That's good news. You know, just very quickly, we we have a few minutes left, but 
breast cancer and women of color is misrepresented or ignored. Can you just expand on that a little more? Well, that that is why we started the Stand for Her program. So um, it is no longer ignored. It is no longer ignored. So there were 10 um, areas of the country that we really keyed in the program on because the numbers were the highest. And there has been great movement in those areas um, for seeking education, patient support that is at a high quality. There is workforce development. Under the um, Stand for Her program, there's also a patient navigator training program. So again, we can actually develop a, a, a workforce of people who can speak to the community and go to the community and take the message where they are. We have a program called Worship in Pink. So that also is a faith-based program um, that many events happen in the churches in our community, in our African American community. So while um, it has been ignored, as you say, while we have ignored it, uh, we can no longer ignore, and we are going to be there in the community to let um, folks know that um, you needn't go without help. That support is there. That you can get the services that you need and that um, there is help for you to face a diagnosis if you are so diagnosed or if you are living with breast cancer. But in closing, breast cancer is the leading cause, uh, cause of cancer death in the U.S. for African-American women, for all women, for all women, okay. This is what this is all about, it's for all women. Mm -hmm. So Rolanda, Please share with our sister power viewers some words of wisdom and hope. Well, I would say that, as I said, we are not dying from early stage diagnosis of breast cancer anymore. In order to detect an early stage breast cancer, one must know what their normal is, know their body, go and get screened. If you were 40 and over, the minute you turn 40, you start getting your mammogram every year. I know, it's not pleasant. It's the best we have. It, uh, it had brought our detection numbers down. Um, but if we don't get that early detection, then we get into that late stage diagnosis, which is for our audience at Sister Power, an issue. We have to get to um, not wait. Go get your, go, go get screened. Screening is available. If you need help, if you don't know where to go, go to coleman.org slash helpline and find out in your community where you can go for help. Thank you for your words of wisdom, Rolanda. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thank you for spending your time with us. Aloha. <laughs>